Greetings, dear friends. Today we're going to talk about the technological barrier, what it is and in which cases you should use it. Right now we're sharpening a kitchen knife. As a rule, a technological barrier is needed for simple knives with poor heat treatment. What is poor heat treatment? It's when, during sharpening, we get a foil-like or wire-like burr. In other words, when we're working with the stone and... The burr is so soft that it's like foil. That's why it's called a foil burr. It starts to bend in the other direction, and you can just wiggle it back and forth with your finger. What happens when we move on to the next stone? This burr, along with part of the cutting edge, simply falls off. And sharpening a knife with such a burr is quite problematic. In this case, you need to get rid of it. Also, as a rule, the burr has a root and the root is metal that has been damaged during work with coarse abrasive stones. Let's also take a look at our foil-like burr under the microscope. We can see that our cutting edge is torn and the burr has already been ripped off in some places, bent to one side in some areas and to the other in others, and we need to remove all of this burr because it will only get in the way during further sharpening. Some people use a bamboo stick or a toothpick when... When people run it along the edge, they usually remove the visible part of the burr, but they tear off both the visible part and part of the cutting edge. They don't remove the root of the burr. When we use finishing stones, whether natural or synthetic, and remove the burr at a 90 degree angle to the cutting edge, we grind away both the root of the burr and the visible part. In this video, I'll show you how to do this using sandpaper. We need to slightly dull the knife and remove the burr along with its root. Let me do this right in front of you now. Just a couple of strokes with medium grit sandpaper. You can even work it a little like this. Let's take a look under the microscope at the result after the technological barrier. As we can see, we already have an even cutting edge. You can see a reflection in the area of the cutting edge. This is the dulled part after the sandpaper, and let's continue sharpening. We've moved on to the next stone, and we'll need to work with it a bit longer to get back to the cutting edge. But we'll also raise the sharpening angle a little. Let's increase the angle by exactly four clicks. That's less than one-tenth of a degree, but it will help us with sharpening and we'll be sure to work right along the cutting edge, which will speed up the process itself. We continue sharpening and don't forget that while sharpening, we need to avoid applying pressure to the abrasive stone. We don't stay on one side for too long, as we've mentioned repeatedly in our videos, we don't work on or widen the bevel on just one side. The bevels should be symmetrical on both sides. Accordingly, the finer the grit of the sharpening stone, the smaller and more refined the burr we ultimately get. So after carefully working both sides of the blade, our burr is already incredibly small, and I think we can simply and effectively remove it with a single deliberate stroke away from ourselves, utilizing the very same stone we've just been diligently working with. As a direct and positive result, we consistently achieve a perfectly clean and exceptionally sharp cutting edge. We've removed the burr, and now we switch to the next stone. If you notice that after using the next stone you still have a foil-like burr that's interfering with your sharpening, then we create a technological barrier as well. We slightly dull the knife, remove this burr, and continue sharpening. Let's move on to the next stone. In this case, we'll be using a 2014 grit stone, and we'll raise the angle by about 4 to 5 clicks. And we continue sharpening. At this point, there's no visible burr, so nothing is getting in the way, and we just keep going. And don't forget the crucial finishing strokes. We absolutely need to completely and thoroughly remove the burr using only away from you motions. When you pull the abrasive stone toward yourself, you effectively form the burr. When you push it carefully away, you effectively cut it off. The longer you meticulously work each side of the knife, the better you'll be able to remove the burr, and consequently, the better the knife will ultimately cut. If you just simply pull the burr out, the knife will immediately start to dull very quickly during use, it essentially stops cutting. 
but if you thoroughly and completely remove the burr along with its very root, the knife will undoubtedly stay sharp for a much longer period. Approximately 40 passes are generally enough for good burr removal, but if you're working with specialized powder steels, it's definitely better to spend even more dedicated time, especially on achieving a truly fine finish. You can make it even a bit finer, that is, go down to 7.5. And there we have a cut through. Even though we have a rather coarse finish, in this case, 7.5, meaning the cutting edge has a fairly pronounced micro serration. Nevertheless, the cut is clean, it doesn't snag the napkin or it doesn't tear under the microscope. After sharpening, we see an even cutting edge and a uniform scratch pattern from the 75 stone. In fact, this is a sufficient finish for most hunting knives, kitchen knives, and knives made from inexpensive steel. A nice, clean cut. So, in conclusion, some people prefer sharpening with synthetic stones like aluminum oxide or silicone carbide, and choose not to use up their diamond stones. It really all depends on how often and how much you sharpen knives. If you do it once, twice or three times, nothing bad will happen to your diamond stones. But if we're talking about sharpening in large volumes, then of course it's better to use synthetic stones for softer steels. As for finishing with natural stones, that's a matter of personal preference. Some people like to finish with a natural stone on soft steels, others don't. So write in the comments what kind of finish you use on soft steels and whether you create a technological barrier in the case of foil or wire burrs. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next episodes.